Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the session for today. I hope you're well. I did this session a little while ago and I've done some more thinking on it. I had a few more slides and wanted to show you some things that uh, might help clarify and also potentially create a plan of action to make it happen. So I'll explain what I mean by this in, in, in simple terms after I've done a little market review there uh just um just want to put this important message up just to remind you that this is for educational purposes only please make sure you're doing your own due diligence on anything you see here okay here is an ea which i just run a back test beforehand this has got this is a breakdown to trade which means it finds a range and then trades it back test for two years and this is the results so 3,000, so you're investing about $40 a trade into this NASDAQ position. And so oh, after two years, it's uh, about three grand and your maximum drawdown at any one stage is $200, which means that if you look at the equity curve, then um, it looks pretty good. In terms of our highest loss, it's 140, our highest profit is 224, but you can see profit is almost double loss. So and around just underneath 60%, and all the other metrics are good. So what do you think about that? Does that look good? 1.79% uh, with a $3,000 return, $3,100 return. Trades about four times a month. But this isn't the full story, of course, because this, if we look at how it performed during that two years, we can see some things that are interesting here. So despite that being good, there was periods here where it did very little. There's a period here. There's another period here. And so it begs the question, so do we want to be in this during this period here and during this period here? Every strategy that you have will work differently on different instruments. And every strategy you have will have periods where it performs well, as it has done really since July, and periods where it doesn't. And if we look at the extent of this period, this is nearly uh, three and a half months. Uh, this one was was even more than that. November through to June, it didn't do anything. So our question is: Is there something that says this is going to stop working around about this period here, where we switch it off, and something that happens here that switches it back on again? Now, although I'm showing you an EA, I'm showing you an EA because we can do a back test on it and see this. Now, there's nothing wrong with you doing that on your regular system as well. But you'll know that yourself. You'll know you'll have periods where you're one step forward, two steps back, and it's just not happening. There's two impacts of this. First of all, we could lose money during this time, which we did here. Look at the high to the low spot. That was a was that drawdown period, around about $180. But that's the worst it got at any time. So we can lose dollars during this period. Even if we don't lose a lot of dollars, which is obviously the, the, the order of the day, we've got to have the confidence to uh, do that. The second thing is, of course, we lose opportunity. If we've got our money tied up in X positions and we have rules in our trading plan or rules in our EA book that says you're only allowed X number of positions open at any one time. If we're in this regularly during this period, it means our money, that's what we term opportunity risk. So if we can come up with switches that say, now's a good time to switch it off, now's a good time to switch it on again, then that. So these results are great, but you've essentially got two choices. You do I stay in and ride it out and grab my three grand from a $40 repeated investment 93 times, or do I switch it off and look for some another system or strategy that works better so we'll come back to that so does that make sense have, have you all experienced that where you've had periods where a trading system's done well or an ea's done well and periods where it uh it sucked yeah it's pretty common so that's what we're on about there are times as i said where this happens and we've got two choices we look for ways to find timely actions to switch it on and off not just on a whim just not not just because we've had three uh losing trades but because the market's telling us it's not going to do well for this time 
And if we can find the right switches, then it, of course, can improve outcomes, not only in terms of reducing loss on that particular strategy, on that particular instrument or series of instruments, but also, of course, make sure that our money is investing in strategies that are working or instruments that are working. So if there's an inverse relationship, for example, between the NASDAQ and the USD, if the NASDAQ long isn't doing well, does that mean that we should be looking at, yeah, we've worked out the switches for this to switch this NASDAQ off, but does it mean that during that period, the US dollar does pretty well on the same system? So there's a few things that we need to sort of talk about there. For the purposes of this discussion, the assumption is we have evidence of long-term profit and we continue to monitor over a long-term period. And what we're looking for is solutions for a specific strategy. It's not likely that a good time to trade the NASDAQ, to use that example, is a, is a bad time to trade the USD and vice versa. Uh, it's not a good time to, uh, if the NASDAQ's doing well, it doesn't necessarily mean the AUD USD is a good place to be. It doesn't necessarily mean gold and copper are good places to be. So, we need to have an open mind in terms of what we're looking for here is a broad solution initially and then if we've got evidence that that concept works then we can start to hone down on a few things that might be important and for the sake uh, of terminology we're going to call this uh switching uh, we're going to call these switches where we're intervening to switch some to switch a strategy off and on um this is an issue okay is it all about price action um it's not an unreasonable assumption to assume the solution is based in price action so if we look for example the price action if we're trading an hourly time frame if we look at the price action over longer time periods well that would appear to be a great place to start But there are influences on price action which are significant, uh, such as volume and volatility. Uh, and if we just focus on one component, it means we might be either, we might be uh, underselling ourselves in terms of that being robust in terms of a switch on or off. So, It's not easy because we know it's not easy because not many people do it. In fact, I don't know anybody who does that. This it's built into some EAs. At best, there'll be a look, a look at a longer term time frame for a tick off. But I think we can do better than that. I think we look at this graph that I showed you there and we make it better. Can't run a back test live because I'm doing it on tick with this to show that. The functions. Um, so we have a choice. We can either theorize and talk about it and say, hey, isn't that nice? If we can do that, or we can do something about it. So obviously, we want to move from this session to do something about it. Uh, and of course, to do that, we need to work out what the start point is. So, first of all, we need to get absolute clarity about what the problem is. So we can't just use, and certainly EAs help us, and for those of you who are not trading EAs, then we can certainly maybe help out. Um, but you can quite see here, this is an equity graph uh, of a different EA. Uh, you can see over the two-year period starts around about 10,000, ends up at around about 11,166. Uh, low drawdown, not many periods of drawdown. Uh, but you can see here again there's periods where it doesn't do so well and the periods where it does very well so again we can identify the problem now it might be uh, as simon suggested that there may be something that um that is seasonal but usually seasonal seasonal things are priced in already. It's only it's like data. Data is already everything that's known or expected is already priced into market. So we are pricing in 
those two fed quarter percent rate drops during november december but the market's now saying hang on a minute some of this data is doing okay so we're not we're not going into recession right now for the foreseeable future so if the fed wants to just give quarter percent rather than two quarters of a percent it's in a position to do so so everything that but that's all priced into the markets so a seasonal um a seasonal factor will only become influential on price action if it deviates from what was expected so if we have a a, a, a standard winter you would expect energy uses to be at, energy uses to be at a standard level if however we get a a, a winter which is uh which is colder then we would expect that energy cons colder than expected would expect expect energy consumption to go up i.e demand and hence energy prices to rise so we can't make assumptions about this but we can do observations exactly as simon did there and say hey look something kooky going on here can i answer that question uh, later peter in terms of how the eas are going but i will answer it so the best star point is always chart is always charts in particular equity curve of performance over time um because what we do is we see is we see the information in reality to determine the extent of the problem or, or, and we want to deviate or, or, or want to stay away from things which aren't a big problem and just be another new mission that sounds a bit funky to have a look at so when we're looking at doing this and we are in terms of EA advance which we're going to start in november we need to make a judgment on is it worth the investment of time and effort and effort and this is based on should it be a priority remember those assumptions i made right at the start that if you haven't got a profitable system if you're not trading it if you're if things aren't working out if there's a uh, a, a particular stop that we so we put that handbrake in for that really catastrophic candle that was a priority that's more of a priority than starting to look at switches on and off over a period of time. And secondly, of course, are you serious enough about it to follow through? It's not, this is work. Um, as with anything to do with anything, including trading, you need to do some hard yards at the front end to get the results at the back end. So you could bimble along and be quite happy with your $3,000 for your 1.7% uh, drawdown. Uh, for a 40 dollar investment every time you uh open a position which would be great i mean that's great whichever way slice it if that happens in the live markets that is great and that might be okay for you you might think that's enough we don't need to do any more stuff or you could say hey hang on a minute we can do better than this just to give you an example the, the initial testing of, of of the handbrake uh and the trail minimizer although that still needs some work is around about adding around about 30 to 45 percent on what would be the case if they weren't in so it's not insignificant but it does require something so let's be real most traders will pay at best lip service to tackling this if at all but if you really want a trading edge maybe this is part of it what are trading edges edges for those of you who don't know is it gives you an advantage over other market participants um you'll need to get over the what i call a curve fitting mindset that will be the block uh to exceeding what is possible for many so there are some that would say oh you just you're just messing around with the figures here just to get the best result over a period of time well absolutely that's what we're doing we want the best result over a period of time and if that involves changing the settings or using different settings for different instruments then that's what we do or doing a slightly different strategy in light of the mark old market cliche of the staircase down the elevator shaft we've we've now put something in place to manage the elevator shaft and you've got a choice to do or not to do but if you start to call that curve fitting which is something that some people just trot out without really thinking about what they're saying um then get over it if you're looking about a one period difference on a on a price i may cross 
that could be described as potentially curve fitting, I guess. Uh, but even then, why why wouldn't you? You can do this, and there's there's four key approaches outside of direct strategy improvement. So our start point is always how can I improve this strategy? What extra filters do I can I put in that are going to mean my entry is a higher probability? So I've given you an example already in that you could sort of say right, we're going to want confirmation on a longer time frame uh, before we get in on this. One of our simpler models, the EMA caress, is based on a simple cross of a 15 MA and but we want confirmation on the four hour chart there's been a pullback and subsequently a move to the upside so we can use sentiment analysis tools to gauge market sentiment uh, and if sentiment indicates indecision or lack of direction then pause your ea or pause your strategy uh, from a discretionary point of view um I've talked, we've done sessions before on strength of signal. Um, so we can move, we can, if we come up with a strength of signal score, then it can be used to make entry accumulation exit decisions. So move from a high to a low score. So if we have a, uh, if we have three or four things that make up our strength of signal, so we might say we might have a momentum indicator in there. We might have what's happening, actually happening to the candle. We might have a, longer time frame trend we might have um volume so if we have those four things and those four things combine create a score that says this is a strength of signal eight or this is a strength of signal three um then that may influence decision making on a particular um on a particular trade but can we use the same concept in terms of what we're trying to achieve here, in terms of switching on and off. And I would suggest that that combination of factors is a good thing. Um, outside of direct strategy improvement, we can look at market sentiment. So issues of time frame, indications, sensitivity are worthwhile um, keeping an eye on, but we can use uh, sentiment analysis tools if there's a lack of direction, uh, markets are in a psychological state of indecision. So triangular or move from uptrend to sideways trend or because we can always get back in. I gave you that example of the oil, of the AUD Japanese yen. Uh, so if we look at this, purely on price action, this has now, let's say we're in from down here this morning. This is now not breach this level of 101.64 for one two three four five six seven eight nine bars out the last 10 it's tested this and failed to breach it that is overcooking that's uptrend to sideways trend get out of that position because you've got a trend continuation strategy that says hopefully you've got a trend continuation strategy that says if it if it goes to here it means that we're in trend continuation and now we can get into a new trade bank what you've got and then go again or if it was a parabolic sar exit which you guys on the trail stop course are doing that's this is a good example of a two dot stop it's stopped going up there's two parabolic bars which two parabolic dots which are above uh the price now so get out and get ready to go again providing you've got a strategy to trade to trade this new breakout or trend continuation whatever you want to call it uh now we can look at the that equity curve I showed you, we can do analysis on that. So we can look at calculating the moving average of that equity curve. And if the equity curve appears to be dropping off and is below the simple moving average for, for a specified period, stop trading or disable your EA if you're trading automated. But there are a couple of things about this. It is a lagging indicator. So it's likely to lag not only in terms of switch off, but switch on as well which means that you may miss out on uh, on part of the upturn of the strategy as well. Uh, volatility filters, um, I think there's something in volatility, but I suspect that there's a couple of ways to look at volatility. And those of you who have heard me talk about options previously, um, it's not necessarily, is it higher or lower volatility than the norm? 
it's some of that but equally so it's the direction of the volatility and then of course we can monitor drawdown profit monitor we'll do it quite simply on the numbers so if something uh if something pulls back one percent we switch it off uh, but then of course we've got the lagging it's got to perform well again to uh to re-enter it so if we're looking at equity profit over a period of time now the solution to that maybe is that we say right okay um we're still going to monitor this but once it's got over that pe drawdown period uh, then we're good to go again yeah uh, I, I i think that the latter one is not possibly a way to go okay so if we look at the equity equity curve um itself so there's the mean i'm trying to go off on rod small for doing this for me so there's just the mean of the equity curve so if we said that the mean of this we want to switch it on when it's above that and switch it off when it's below then that really doesn't work we've got to have a period of time first of all a period of time where it does it you can see at the, at the start here um then we would have missed out on all of this until and we'll get in here but that would be good but then we'll miss out on all this which is right at the end which is still to the upside so we can look at something like that uh, i mentioned the moving averages so this is not just the mean but it's moving averages and you can see that there are three uh, here's the equity curve and there's three moving averages on this the 20 the 60 and the 100 so do we say well look when once as we do with trading do we suggest that if this crosses then we're in so if it crosses to the upside so we take advantage of this and you can see here it crosses back down and does this sideways thing this is the gb pound yen uh, again over a period of a couple of years so is that the way to look at it in terms of but then you've got then you've got the question of which uh eat which moving averages the other way you could look at that is as we're doing with the tightening the trail look that look at the distance between the equity curve and one of those em one of those smas and just say well look if it's below the green we're not in if it's above the green we're in and that would take us out of some of these here actually the blues are probably a better example take us below here so be out really for a lot of this period here uh, but here would probably be back in again so but you could be in this situation as well so this is exactly the same thing here but it never gets below so we're sort of in this the whole time and it, this is what we want to be there's no periods there where it didn't look uh, good this is a, a nasdaq ea so that would work from the terms of uh, uh, of this as well here's another example this is uh, a bolgi bank ea on aussie yen so you can see here we would probably give a little bit of a gap just so we don't get uh, it doesn't stop if it if it touches uh, here here and here uh but that one may, we maybe get we maybe take it off at that stage uh, and then switch it back on uh, and then again obviously later on around here we'd switch it off again and then switch it back on again at that stage after that stop so there's there's certainly room with looking at ma's equity curves that sort of stuff and i think that could be part of the could be part of the decision okay um and then it's simple or exponential exponential is more responsive um so maybe um if, if you see here the uh, blue one is the simple uh, the green one is more responsive so it turns quickly uh and in the same way that we want so what this means essentially is that if you are using this there'll be less of a lag now here's the other thing we could use a price chart against a moving average so we could say right if we're long the aussie yen then what we can do is say right on the daily chart if it's above the 100 ma we're on if it drops below we're off so we'll be off here on here off here on here off here on here so 
if we look at the Nasdaq, just out of interest, because I haven't done this, but um, in light of your point, Simon, if we just put this on a daily chart, put on a normal template. Okay, so if we look, let's change this to 100. Oh, stop. Okay, so we're looking at this 100 level. Okay, so let's just take this back. Do, 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 do. We actually got a drop this November here. So there was our November there. We had that drop off. And But if we look here, we've missed out on all of this. Actually, that started from about here. Uh, our, so we have one November drop here in 2022. In 2023, we don't have a November drop at all in the underlying uh, and the underlying equity. So from a long-term time frame point of view, it doesn't really work particularly well. Though that doesn't mean it can't be part of the solution. So it could be we want this and this and this. If those three are ticked, it's like why what we do with exits. So we have um, an MA exit, which is a price move and average. We have a trail stop and we have a take profit. Those three exits combined, we have much more than that, but those three exits combined uh, are what creates the decision. If any of those is triggered, then we're out. It could be that we want A, B, and C to be the case, as we do often with entry. So we want the price to be in the top third of the candle. We want volume to be increasing. We want, we want it to be in uptrend on the underlying MA. And we don't enter the trade unless all these three things are ticked. So it could be that we use that sort of approach where it's an all or leave it approach now the other thing I, I wanted to show you was volatility i'm just going to put an atr on this let's just use a 14. now what do we see in those periods where it wasn't very clever what do we note well volatility is in downtrend here so that's interesting in 2023. So if we're looking at November through to. So if we look at November where it underperformed, volatility is down and it's flattened off. OK. And the time which it picked up again was January. And price action started to rise again. So what's that? That would be what date was that? The 11th of December. So at this point, we've got a difference. Okay, so we no longer have price and consolidation and downwards um, and downwards volatility. So if we go back to our to our EA. If you look here, this was November through to February, really. So if we had an MA on that, then that might help. But we've got a decrease in volatility. Let me have to, I have to redraw these now. I've played with that. And that, this point here is really when volatility stopped dropping and leveled off okay so we dropped dropped had a little bit of a bounce along the bottom and then leveled off so that day is around there at this stage we're in uptrend maybe it's the 50 we work on bear in mind we're trading on an hourly chart here okay so maybe it's got to be a uh, yeah, maybe it's got to be above 50 and volatility has got to stop going down. So in that case, we're above the 50, volatility has stopped going down. So we're back in there on that date. We switch it back on again, which is the 23rd of January. If we look here, 23rd of January was here. So we'd be able to take advantage of that subsequent move up to there. Does that make sense? So I think the solution is... Look looking at three things, looking at price action on the chart, looking at some sort of 
measure of average and how uh, I the how the equity curve is performing and volatility direction. We know times higher volatility are more likely to produce good results or bad results. Volatility increase volatility away from a specific point with more velocity. So what that means is that if volatility is dropping, it means the market's less likely to give us good opportunities. So it's maybe a combination of those three things altogether make the difference. So what we're going to do is we're going to put that together. And we're going to test it out. Uh, no doubt there's merit in switches. There's need some investment in the process. As I said, I think the solution is A plus B plus C. And of course, a, a lot of those um, graphs and, and putting on moving averages on equity curves were done by AI. So as technology is increasing, we're going to be in a better position to get that data and get that data well. AI is, is going to change trading, but I think this is going to be part of that in terms of, I think, using that and being ahead of the curve uh, is going to make trends more significant. It's going to make this, uh, the velocity of trends uh, increase. It's going to make, there's going to be a lot more automated trading. Everybody looking at the same charts with the same signals. So we, didn't need, we need to be smarter. Uh, and that doesn't matter whether you're discretionary and you, you're manually trading strategies, whether you're manually entering and using an exit EA, which you uh, some of you guys are doing, or whether you're doing fully automated. It makes sense to be ahead of the curve on this. So I hope that sort of makes sense. Now, markets are going to be choppy over the next couple of days, so just be careful, I would say, as well. Uh, that's really important in terms of where you're at right now, the amount of risk you're taking. So just be cognizant of that. It's really important. Trade safe and see you again soon. Bye-bye for now.